probably the most exciting thing we'll be doing today. Oh, blast, the camera lens has missed it over again. That better. Sometimes I think the researchers on this show go too far. We're going to be looking at fashion for both chaps and chapesses, showing you how to look good, whatever your shape or size. That's if this lot never thaws out in time. Roz, it's really going to be worth it, Sandy. Yeah, well, you've gone over the top this time. Harriet has been researching teen mags from all over the world. While you're all reading about the latest pop groups, what are they reading in China, Germany and Japan? Give us a sneak preview, Harriet. I can't. What do you mean you can't? I'm afraid all my teen mags are frozen in here. Oh, well, well, just have to keep that one on ice then. You see, Ross, I have got a sense of humour, but quite honestly, you are skating on thin ice with this cry and cry and do brief business. Cryogenic, Sandy. It's all about freezing simple organisms so we can save them, use them later. What, like fish fingers? Oh, yeah, and other parts of the fish as well. Get on with it. There are insects and small animals, and maybe even human organs. It's so possibly today. Oh, dear. <laughs> Tea, madam. Lovely. That's just what I'd need. A, a lovely cup of iced tea. Sugar, madam. No, no, thanks. I'll just have this one lump. Oh. Aren't you cold, Marion? Cold is as cold does, madam. In my experience, it is all in the mind. And you would be considerably warmer were you to remove that rather overwhelming outer garment and concentrate your efforts on feeling warm. Are you sure? Twelve years in the Arctic, madam. You spent twelve years in the Arctic? It is a book, madam. I borrowed it from the library. Right. Oh, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. I could be really colder than I am. Oh! Oh, yes. It's right. I feel fine. Hi, 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 I think I've frozen up completely. Can you hold your scissors, please? Scissors, one scissors. Ah, diddy, diddy, da, da, diddy. Mm, I see. I believe Madam would like the titles rolled. Here she comes. Always looking good I'm hoping that you'll notice me She's a girl in a million I knew I'd find her Sandy. Chris! I am not doing it without the knickers. Well, they're not going to be ready. They're still frozen. You'll have to wear a pair of Marion's. Are you sure? You look great. Go and join the others. You're going to love this. We're doing this terrific Fat Man and Bobbin sketch. What am I going to do with these? Leave the undergarment to me, madam. Oh, thanks, Marion. You can't wriggle out of this one, Fat Man. It's pur obvious who's gonna be the winner. <laughs> Holy cat food, fat man! She's trying to wind you up like a clockwork mouse! Easy, boy, Chunder. She hasn't caught us catnapping yet. Oh, no? Wait till you and your puny sidekick see my secret weapon. <laughs> Has Cat Lady finally got her claws into Fat Man and what is her secret weapon? Will Fat Man and Bob and be made to kiss the canvas? Kiss the canvas? There'll be no canvas kissing in our corner, boy Chunder. Nothing frightens the draped crusader. Meow! Purse your lips, Mr. Goody Tissues! <laughs> Holy phobia! What's happened to Fat Man? Harriet, Harriet, 
What's happened to the sketch? Why isn't Fat Man fighting? Well, Cat Lady has obviously discovered that Fat Man has a phobia about slugs. What do you mean, phobia? A phobia is a fear gone mad. I mean, a lot of people are scared of things like spiders, but people with phobias are genuinely terrified out of all proportion to the situation. So what happens to them? Well, they're so scared that they can't stop their body going through all the same changes it would if they were about to fight or run for their lives. But all they're facing is a little slug. Yes, or whatever else their phobia might be. Common phobias are things like the dark, snakes, injections, or situations like going to the dentist. It can be anything, even uh, chickens or <laughs> celery. And, and there's also a group of people no known as linonophobics. Well, what's their problem? They're afraid of string. You're kidding. No, that's the whole point. The phobias may seem funny to us, but they're usually triggered by a very real incident in the past, which then becomes an irrational fear. So Fat Man's phobic about slugs? Yes, look what's happening to him now. Adrenaline's pouring into his blood. Why is that? His body's getting ready to fight or run away. Adrenaline helps make you alert and gets rid of any tiredness. His heart's beating faster to get the blood away from the skin and organs to where it's needed, the muscles and brain. Yes, look, you can see it happening. His face has gone paler as his body prepares for quick thinking and violent action. All his digestion's stopped. His mouth's gone all dry and he can't eat. All his energy is being channeled into any action that might be needed. There's a massive increase in his respiration. Yes, he's breathing deeply and rapidly, sending more oxygen to the muscles to make them more efficient. Look, he's starting to sweat and his hair's standing on end. Yes, it's helping cool his body down. But he hasn't done anything yet. But his body thinks it's going to and it doesn't want to overheat. So all these changes to his body are happening just because he's afraid of a little slug. But Fat Man's more than just afraid. He's phobic about them. There's only about one or two people in every hundred who have a real phobia about something. I mean, a lot of people are scared of different things, but being phobic about something is quite a different matter. And that's where you made your mistake, cat lady. I may not like slugs, but I'm not phobic about them. Don't worry, drape crusader. Lucky I've got my dealing with slugs in a boxing ring fat kit on my utility belt. <laughs> Holy slime trail, that was a big one. Curses! Will Fat Man recover enough to slug it out another day? Of course he will. The trouble is, because he hasn't fought or run, his body will instantly reverse the process. Look at him now, the slug's gone. The blood's rushing back to his face and he's gone all red. And it's rushing away from his muscles, so he's going weak at the knees and feels faint. And all that extra breathing's left him gasping for air, the sweating's given him goosebumps, and because his muscles have relaxed so suddenly, he wants to go to the loo. All over a little slug. No, all over a great big phobia. Oh, I tell you, I'm glad I'm not phobic about anything. Oh, look! Cute little money spider. Ah! Oh! Oh. Yes, you're right. Very relaxing, I must say. Now tell me, what are the facts? Well, my lord, research indicates that knitting is the most popular hobby amongst women in the country. Oh. Oh. Uh, uh, and men? Uh, fishing, my lord? Oh, don't mind if I do. Oh. No, my lord, I, I, I didn't mean that you should go fishing. What, what I was trying to indicate... Well, my learned friend, what is that noise? For goodness sake, excuse me. We can't possibly do Jacques Cruz with all this noise. Oh, excuse me, who are you? Sonia. Oh, hello, Sonia. Oh, hello. Um, are you a model? No, I'm Jonathan. Oh, hi, Jonathan. How do you do? Oh, you look very nice. Uh, who's chosen your clothes? Julie from Just Seventeen. Oh, Lovely. Yes. Hmm? This is Julie Sleaford. She's a fashion editor from Magazine Just Seventeen. How did you do? Oh, excuse me, so I'm not looking at all nice. Thank you uh, very much, Mary. There we go. A bit trendy. So, have you chosen... Thank you very much. Have you chosen all these clothes? Yes, that's right. Well, what did you start with? Well, because um, fashion's changed so quickly, it costs you a lot to keep up. Mm -hmm. So I decided to, to, that it's a cheap alternative is to base your wardrobe on classic clothes and then add accessories to make it more fashionable. What do you mean by classic clothes? Well, they're simple shapes that haven't got strong fashion details like a high waist or a big collar, so they don't date and you can wear them year in, year out. Well, can we have a look some close-ups? So, Sonia, can we have a look at what you're wearing, my love? This is very nice. Now, now how did, what did you choose for her? Well, for Sonia, I started with some classic Levi's 501s from American Classics. That's where Bros get these. 
And the great thing about them is you buy them a few sizes too big and pull them in with a belt, so it doesn't matter if you've got a big bum or wide hips or anything. Eat too much at Christmas, yeah, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I added a simple white man's t-shirt, that's another classic, and a navy blazer from French Connection. And, and I think we must look at the shoes here because I think a little bit of a trend setting going on. I think that's rather, rather splendid. And lovely colourful accessories as well. Yeah, well they just brighten it all up and you know, make it look a lot more fashionable and it's cheap. I think that's great. Thank you very much, Sonia, especially. Now, what about lads? It must be a bit more difficult. I mean, uh, it's difficult to find clothes for them, isn't it? Well, boys are starting to look a lot more fashionable now, but like you say, there isn't as much for them to choose from. But I went for another classic style, and it's American, with a sweatshirt and denim jacket by Lee, and some chino trousers, and some... DM shoes, which are very popular at the moment. You've put quite bulky clothes on him. Well, he's very small and he tends to wear things that are quite tight, which e emphasises his smallness. So I put him in something a bit looser to fill him out and make him look more grown up. And it works. It's very nice. Johnson, thank you very much indeed. Now, what about Rebecca? You see, Rebecca's done something here that I would never dare to do. She's showing off her legs. Well, Rebecca's got nice legs, so I thought she should show them off with another classic, which is a short denim skirt. And uh, if you wear your tights and shoes in the same colour, then it'll make your legs look even longer and slimmer. It's a very nice jumper she's got on as well. Yeah, that's uh, another classic, the Aaron. And, and what about the case? I love that. Well, that's great. You've, we've accessorised it with um, postcards, and that's cheap. You know, you can stick them in a hat, in a top mm, pocket. Makes it more personal, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much, Rebecca. Well, listen, would you mind uh, very much just having a quick look through my wardrobe and perhaps you could pep it up a little bit, eh? Oh, no. Oh. Boy, do you know, I've seen a lot of these fashion shows on the telly and I've always wondered what goes on behind the scenes. Come on, let's have a look. Nurse, what's happened to the screens? <coughs> Excuse me? Name? No, but I... I said name. T Toxvig, but Take I... a seat, please, Mrs Toxvig. It's Ms, actually. <coughs> Oh, jeez. A seat, Mrs. Toxvig. Oh, sorry. <whistles> Shall I get that for you? Get what? No. Nothing. Excuse me, could you pass me that magazine, please? Sure. It's all right. <laughs> I can't read this. It's all Greek to me. <laughs> Chinese, actually. And I've got Japanese and American and Spanish and French. All foreign teenage magazines. All the equivalent of smash hits and just 17. Harriet, you can't take them. This is a doctor's waiting room. We have to have magazines. But these are my research. I've collected these from all over the world. Yeah, but they're not your babies. Give them a take. I'll take them. good care special. of them. Oh. oh, look. Here's an American, 17. It's where the girl ends and the woman begins. Ooh. Oh, yeah. What's this she's marked here? Oh, it's an advert. He said, hi, just like that, hi. And he said it in front of her. So what if she hates my guts? The boy's on my mind, bugle boy. What's that in there? Let's have a look. Oh, look, here's a magazine for Japanese boys. See that the cover's on the back, because see the Japanese people, they read from right to left, don't That's they? Right. Yeah. Well, the content seems a bit babyish. Oh, that's disgusting. Sandy, let's have a... No. You're blushing. Come on, let's have a look. No, you're not old enough for this. <laughs> Don't be silly. It's a magazine for teenagers. What on earth? You're right. I am too young. It's really rude. <laughs> oh, here's one for Japanese girls. I wonder if that's just as rude. No, it doesn't seem to be. Oh, look, it's got um, readers' letters in their own handwriting. Oh, is it Dutch puzzle page? Oh, do you know, I did a Dutch crossword once. Oh, did you manage to fill it in? No, I had two sets of clues. It was all double Dutch to me. You silly woman. <laughs> well, it's even got bits of English in it. And look, Bros. They get everywhere, don't they? Even Spain. Oh, lost Bros. <laughs> and Germany. And Hong Kong. Mm. Look, Bros personal file. All set out in Chinese, but arranged just like one of our magazines. Look, bits of it are even in English. That's amazing, isn't it? I mean, there's not many people would understand if they printed bits of Chinese in the middle of smash sure. hits, eh? <laughs> Have you seen this poster? This woman, and I don't know who she is, she's on walls all over Japan. And they are. Hmm? Look, what they're giving away in Spain. Hmm? Notas. What's a notas? Oh, I haven't got a clue. 
Okay, this is a, a, a Chinese magazine for girls. It's called Sisters. And wait till you see the films that they're um, reviewing. It's the same as here. Fatal Attraction, Moonstruck, Wall Street. Are there any Chinese magazines for fellas? Yeah, yeah, there's one here. Well, why? Oh, well, you know, the, the boy, Chinese boys' mags are all done like comic books. Look, you see? Mm. I want to see if there's any kung fu stories in them. I love all that. Oh. I went to see a Bruce Lee film once. I can't stand all that kicking and violence. I had a terrible nightmare. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. All that senseless, mindless bashing mm. people up. No, it wasn't the film. I ate too much popcorn. But it always gives me nightmares. Oh. I had a nightmare once. It was eaten by a whale. Do you remember your first nightmare? Alone in the dark, a cold sweat drying on your face, heart beating like a drum about to burst. Things that you can't quite see in the corners of the room. Eh, the time it took to make that dash to the light switch. Fear, like a hand on the back of your neck. A nightmare. But you forget. It slides to the back of your mind. A, a half-answered promise of destruction. But you forget these things when you grow up, don't you? Childish fears, silly panics, until you're on your way home from the late night corner shop and the footsteps start behind you. The old terror squeezes in your chest. Is it a man? Is he drunk? Is he getting closer? Bargaining with God to get you home safe. Lurid stories from the papers suddenly recalled. Folk devils slavered over by the gutter press, the ripper, the fox, a thousand other maniacs. Well, Leah, the streets aren't safe for women, says the solemn copper on the news at six. Oh, he is getting closer. Oh no, oh no. Fumbling in your pockets for the keys, hands slick and shaking, opening the door, shutting it and bolting it, leaning on it, trembling as the steps go by outside, unchecked. Oh dear. What a daft girl. You reassure yourself. <laughs> what a fuss over nothing, honestly. But you don't do it again, do you? Remember your first nightmare? Well, remember your last. Because that's the one that keeps you prisoner in your house at night. Craig, do you, what do you think happens to you when you die? Well, people portray heaven as a, a cloudy place with people playing hearts and brushing stars with, and they've all got wings and there's a man sitting on the throne with a long beard. <laughs> that's supposed to be God. God, we've got no proof. Nobody knows what God is. God could be neither female or male. God could be something, an animal that we cruel to. God could be a battery chicken or something. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what do you think God is? I don't know what God is. We've got no proof. God could be a cloud of smoke. Lucy, do you believe in heaven? No, I don't think so. I'm not really sure. I think people that don't want to die and aren't ready to die, then they, their spirit comes back as like a ghost because they're, they're not ready to die and just end their life. Uh, Lucy said uh, some people aren't ready to die yet. Um, I believe that there's fate, everything's predestined, that when you die, that is when you're meant to die and that's it. No way. That's, I think that's total rubbish. Yeah. Because, I mean, how can someone decide what, you know, if people are going to die at a five, like a five-year-old's going to die? How yep. can they be ready to die at five? Who maps out our destiny if somebody maps out our destiny? Who is it? Maybe the God. <laughs> there, there could be more than one God because like, the Christians and Catholics believe in God, the Muslims believe in Allah, the Buddhists believe in Buddha. So they could, so they could be more than one god. Yeah, Buddha, like, Allah does, does, doesn't mean that god. they're God by themselves. They could, they could be, they could be a different God altogether. Everybody goes by their own opinion. You see, I might some, say something else. She might say something else. So no one's got a right or wrong answer for it. Marion, what are you doing here? Madam, your lips seem to indicate an attempt at communication, but my ears are not in receipt of any sound. Well, take your earmuffs off then. Don't mumble, madam. He's not well. It's a good job we're at the doctor's. I said take your earmuffs off. What? Quiet. She, she said, said take, take your, your earmuffs, earmuffs off. off. I can't. Why, Why not? not? They appear to be frozen to my head. Oh. 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 So now you know. Mrs Toxvic, the doctor will see you now. You see, if I could just explain. See, I was in the jacuzzi, right, and there was this noise, and I went out, and there was this catwalk, and then we did this fashion thing, you see, and then I wanted to see what was going on behind the scenes, but what I really wanted... I said the doctor will see you now. ...was to see the doctor. Oh, 
Hello, Doctor. Oh. Hi, Sandy. We're just about to watch a film. Oh, good. Do you want a wine gum? Uh, no, no, thanks. thanks. Oh, right. What's it about? Cryogenics, the scientific practice of freezing simple organisms so you can save them and use them later. Well, that sounds interesting. That's what I've been trying to tell you all day. So what sort of things can they freeze in? Well, in this film... What's the matter? Can't we afford colour? It's an experiment, filmed back in the 1950s, and as you can see, they're using really simple equipment. And from here, it looks like they're making, I don't know, what is that, a hoover with, um... Re oh, tea, that's what it is. No, this is one of the most common uses of cryogenics. It's the freezing of animal sperm for storage. You see, Sandy, Ros has just been explaining how they put the sperms in a glycerol solution. Mm. Then they freeze them, and you can see the sperms slowing down. There they are. Mm -hmm. And then stopping. And, in a and then the ice forms. Oh, wow, and then, look at that. then it defrosts, and in a minute you'll see them wriggling again. They are wriggling again, and they're perfectly all right. But so, so the sperm were alive, yeah. and then they were frozen solid, and then they were alive again. That's right. So if you can freeze living sperm, does that mean you can freeze whole animals? No, not if you want to bring them back alive. See, those sperm contain glycerol, which is what saves them. Bodies don't contain that. If you froze animal cells, they'd be really damaged. But hibernating animals, like hamsters, I mean, they can survive in very low temperatures, can't they? Yeah, but they'd die too if they froze completely. Well, so if animals die when they're frozen, what about the fish in the Antarctic? Oh, it's funny you should ask that. Well, I like to keep things rolling along, you know. Well, take the Scotia ice fish. Now, this fish, like a number of fish in the Antarctic, contains a special protein in its blood. This protein coats any ice which forms and stops it from spreading, so the fish can swim about in sub-zero temperatures. I see. But why are they doing all this research into cryobiology? Well, the main aim is to learn how to freeze organs so that you can save them and use them for transplant surgery. Well, I thought they already froze kidneys for transplant. No, what they do at the moment is they put the donor's organs on ice after they've removed all the blood. But the problem is getting the organ to the hospital where the recipient is quick enough. Because we can't freeze organs at the moment, we can only keep them for 24 to 48 hours. But I thought I heard that they froze whole people in America. Yeah, I know, but that's quite a ridiculous idea. But there are rumours that in America, people are taking money to freeze people after they've died in the hope that one day they'll be able to bring them back to life and cure them of the disease that killed them. Yeah, but from what you've just said, even if you could revive people after they're frozen, it wouldn't be the disease that killed them, it'd be the freezer damage to their cells. That's right. So how come the sperm that we saw earlier, how come they weren't damaged? Because it's a very simple organism and it doesn't suffer from intercellular ice formation. And how do you know that? Ros just told me. Oh. It's the same with embryos, which is why you hear about embryos being frozen so that they can be implanted later. Oh, I see. Excuse me, madam, but you're wanted in the office. What happened to your earmuffs? Earmuffs, madam. Did I say earmuffs? Anyway, thanks, guys. I, I feel an awful lot better now. Thanks very much. What? She, she said, said thanks. thanks. Never seen such a whopper. It was it was this big. Uh, exhibit B, my lord. Good gracious! I knew I should never have left it in water. The blighter must have shrunk. N now then, Mr. Stoke. <coughs> what other facts we have before us? Permission to approach the bench, Your Honour. Granted. Exhibit C, my lord. It's the slug from the forty-four that killed him. Guilty. I sentence that slug to ten years' hard labour. Objection, my lord. The maximum recorded lifespan of a slug is one year and six months. Slug dismissed. Hi, chaps. Oh, oh hello, Marion. Oh, what a busy show. I am done in. But I tell you, it went really well. The kettle has boiled, madam. I'm just waiting for the Earl Grey with the hint of orange pico to brew. Will the others be joining you? Oh, I expect so. They're all really pleased with the way it went. <laughs> I, I tell you what, why don't we run the credits while we're waiting for them? Very good, madam. There won't be a minute. Here she comes. She looks older now.
understand it. Maybe they got stuck I'm in the... I'm afraid she's passed it. Sandy. Hi. Hi. Chris. Hi, we're just going to have some tea. Hi. Hi, yeah. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Janet. Sandy. <laughs> Hi. Hi, yeah. Oh, Vince, are you all right? Yes, I had in the canteen. Oh, right. Well, guys, what a great show, yeah, eh? Brilliant bits of it were so funny. <laughs> I love that bit. No, what? I'm afraid that didn't work for me. Oh, that didn't work for me either. Well, well, maybe it wasn't a great show, but it was a good show. Sure, Sandy, it, it wasn't a great show, but it, it really was a, a good show. <laughs> Do you remember that bit? Yeah, where... I'd rather not discuss that right now. I'm not surprised. Sandy... Do we still get paid even if it wasn't a very good show? Oh, yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, great! <laughs> <laughs> Mind you, I really thought the slug was marvellous. 